Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now it's time for us to look at highlights. Highlights, of course, features some of the most important political stories that have happened in the past 24 hours. Now joining us to speak on today's highlights is Yomi Adebanjo. Yomi Adebanjo is not just a lawyer, but a very intelligent one at that. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much for it having me on the show. It is a pleasure to have you. Yes, it is. Okay, so Yomi Adebanjo, let's go straight to today's conversation. Of course, right. we are starting off with Fire Shea. Yeah. I'm sure you're very aware of all the drama that has trailed him leaving office. And what was your first reaction when you saw his dramatic T-shirt with EFCC, I'm here? I think it was ballsy, you know. Um, I think, you know, a Fire Shea is an individual himself. Everybody knows he's a sort of a drama king, isn't he? Do so, you think he's more of a drama king than Dino Melai? That's a tough question. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tough question. But uh, underlying all the drama, I think he's a very strategic guy. So you shouldn't you shouldn't take it for granted. He's like a, like the Trump of Nigeria, isn't he? You know, mm. they, they they say a lot. They they often puff, but you know they they sort of try and get their way, and they're very intelligent in how they go about things. So I mean, it's somebody that shouldn't be written off. You know. Yeah. Very true indeed. Of course, he shouldn't be written up. But right now, he's currently facing allegations, um, an 11 count charge against yeah. him at the courts. Now, the, he's applied for bail, but it did seem initially that the bail was refused. But now it's been granted yeah. by the Mojisola Olat Tore Gun fed, led Federal High Court in Lagos. And it was granted today. The immediate past governor of Ikiti was granted the bail to the tune of 50 million naira. Now, he's standing the trial over an 11 count charge bordering on money laundering abuse of public office, criminal breach of trust, and stealing, up to the tune of 6.9 billion naira preferred against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Recall that on Monday, Fire Shea was denied, denied bail by the court when he appeared yeah. for his trial, and the judge had ordered that he be remanded under the EFCC custody, mm -hmm. and the case adjourned till today. Yeah. He had pleaded not guilty to the charges against him when they were read to him in court on Monday, but fortunately for him, he's been granted bail. What do you make of this story? Well, I think, you know, the, the most important thing is that now we're sort of getting to the era whereby we know that um, the fact that you're a governor does not exclude you from, you know, facing the, the law. And more importantly also, we think that, um, I think, sanctity of, you know, the legal environment, you know, making sure that people are held responsible irrespective of their office is very important. So let the process, you know, play out. Um, let it marshal his defense. Let um, EFCC put forward their evidence, and you know, let um, um, justice be served. I, I think that is that is what is most important in the process. And I think if you look at it also, um, interestingly, you know, we've had um, um, now we do have uh, about three cases whereby ex governors have been convicted, um, which is quite important for the system to know that you know, um, irrespective of whatever position or ladder you are in, right? You know, if you do stuff that is wrong, you will be charged, you will be convicted um, if there's evidence. But again, you know, what is I would what I think should not, you know, be done is that, you know, playing out um, media trials, you know, um, I think it's very important for us to stick to the facts. You know, exactly. people get a lot em emotional in these crimes, you know, and uh, they don't they don't look at the facts of the case enough. I mean, um, I, I think you know the charges have been read out. The charges have been charged to court. You know, um, let's see how well EFC can build its case. Um, um, and let's see how well he can defend it, you know, and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. I, I'm really glad that you mentioned the, uh, the thing of media trial because we tend to see that a lot in a lot of high profile cases yeah. that it just gets to a certain point and it's kicked out. You know, we never get to hear what happens of it again. We make a lot of noise because we're a bunch of emotional people and that's the end. People aren't put behind bars. What, what do you, th how well do you think this, this case will be followed through till the end? Because this isn't the first time we've seen a high profile case that wasn't followed through. Are you really um, optimistic about the outcome of this that the judiciary will end up, you know, and the EFCC as well, we end up going the whole nine yards? Well, for me, yeah, I, I think what is more important for me is that um, the winner in this case should be the judiciary um, in terms of the fact that um, we should allow the process to run its course. Now, you, you talk about historically, right, um, we do have a sort of a, a, a slight problem because we run such an extremely procedural system where, you know, um, cases go on for a length of time because of technicalities and trials between trials. Um, and, and obviously, even though there's been some um, laws that have been put in place to sort of like streamline the process and make it easier, but still, you know, lawyers, are, we, we're getting, um, we still run this system whereby, you know, you still have... Uh, protracted cases for no reasons. So let's see how, because there's a political angle also, because you cannot, you cannot exclude the political side of this. There's a there is a political angle to this. You know, it would be extremely naive to think that it's just uh, purely uh, 
non-political. Um, so there's a political angle. So I think that, you know, in terms of how prepared AFCC is, I, I think we'll probably see them go two notches higher. Uh, but I, I'm sure he's, he's, as I said, you know, if I actually watch out for him, he's, he's an extremely intelligent guy, you know. Um, and I'm sure he's lawyered up. Um, and he's, he has very extremely intelligent people in yes, his team as um, well. Yes, he's lawyered up. Uh, I know the lawyer that is uh, representing him, great son, great senior of mine, you know. So um, we'll see how it plays out. Very quickly before we leave this story, finally, what's your take on the immunity clause? Many people have made arguments for and against it. And we're starting to see that. There are lots of people while in office that have corruption allegations against them, but nobody's really able to push it yeah. because they are at the helm of affairs, at the, you know, the top city of power, and nothing yeah. is being done, and there's a clause actually protecting them. So on what side of the divide are you on, you know, to take it out or to leave it? Well, I think, I think definitely because of the kind of environment that we are in, right, where people can be seriously, it's a strongly litigious environment, and people can be very petty about, uh, about different things. So... I would, for one, in the greater interest of, you know, um, of um, continuity and all, you know, make sure that uh, you keep the immunity clause in place. Um, and, you know, you can always, as long as the system allows you to be able to go after individuals that, you know, um, afterwards, um, after they've, uh, they've run the course of their government, I, I think you should be kept in place. To enjoy more of these our Ogunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.